Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kang He. Today, I'm going to teach you how to build a AKS Kubernetes cluster and then install MySQL database and plus install custom K10 software in just one command within eight minutes. So you got to ready to use lab to play with all the Kubernetes backup restore, disaster recovery, or application mobility capabilities. The job does take eight minutes. So let me just run this command, log into the console, run this magic command first, and then I will walk you through some of the details. So I already run this magic command. It's called deploy.sh. Now, let me come back to the slide to walk you through some of the details. So this is uh, today's topic. I'm going to give you a live demo of build a Kubernetes cluster on Azure Cloud plus my SQL database plus, you know, custom K10, <coughs> excuse me. So one command, eight minutes to build a ready to use labs. <clears throat> and after you finish your testing, basically you can destroy the whole environment with just another one command, typically in less than 10 minutes. So if you are if your favorite cloud is Google Cloud, you can follow the link to build a similar environment. So basically from a Google Cloud, build a Google Kubernetes engine cluster, plus PostgreSQL database, plus custom K10. So you can play with the backup restore of the Kubernetes cluster. So let me give you some details before we run the deploy uh, command. So there are some prerequisites you need to be aware of. Basically, for the Azure Cloud, you need the Azure Cloud account, and uh, the trial account should be okay. And then you need to install Azure CLI if it wasn't installed for Mac OS and Linux. You need to install Azure CLI, and then you need to run AZ login to sign into Azure Cloud. But if you're using Cloud Shell, you don't have to install the Azure CLI or sign in because once you log into the portal, Azure Cloud portal, you actually you already signed in. And after you sign in, you basically just run a Git clone to clone the repository from GitHub to your local host. After that, you need to change it to this directory, aks-k10, and then run a command called createapp.sh. So what we are going to create here is we're going to create an Azure app registration. So we're going to use these uh, credentials to run the installation of the custom k10 to give the backup software, the permissions to take snapshot and then to move the snapshot to the Azure blob storage. And optionally, you can customize the cluster name, the VM size, the region or location, and also the container name. So you can VI or VIM, uh, the setting environment file. So now let me explain you the magic command de deploy.sh. How to run this command? I already kick it off. Uh, kick it off this command. It does take around eight minutes to finish. So what does this command do? Is to create an AKS cluster from Azure CLI, and then we're going to install custom K10 software and followed by deploy my SQL database. And then we're going to create an Azure blob storage location profile. And uh, 
we will also create a backup policy for MySQL database. And after the policy created, we will run our on-demand backup jobs. So basically, we are going to take a snapshot of the application components and also all the Kubernetes uh, configurations. And we will take a snapshot of the workload, in this case, MySQL database. And after the snapshot creation done, we will export the snapshot to the Azure Blob Storage, which is more safe. You're not putting all your eggs in the same basket. And with the Azure Blob Storage, you can have the retention lock enabled to avoid you know, the ransomware attack. Yeah, that's about the deploy command to build the labs in around eight minutes. So you can also optionally, if you want to just run a manual backup, so you can run this command, run once.sh to manually kick off a job immediately. So basically the, the same thing, take snapshot of the application components, take snapshot of the application configurations, and then take a snapshot of the MySQL database. So in this case, you might be running MySQL database on the pop persistent volume claims. And after that, after the snapshot done, we will export the snapshot to Azure Blob Storage. So after your testing, uh, don't forget to run destroy command to destroy the labs to avoid the unneeded, the charges from the cloud providers. So from Azure Cloud, actually, to clean up the whole environment is a lot easier. So basically, you just need to remove the resource groups. And part of the remove the resource groups, so we will remove the AKS Kubernetes cluster. We will remove all the relevant uh, VNets and subnets and all the relevant uh, disks and the snapshots. And we also remove the storage account of the containers created part of the deploy. I think that's about it. And uh, there are some references. Uh, so if you want to check the source code, uh, the details of the scripts, you can go to this link uh, from the GitHub. And for the custom documentations, uh, go to docs.custom.io. Uh, there is a post about the DevOps tool of July month, uh, which is worthwhile to read it and to watch the YouTube video as well. And for the AKS backup and restore, there is a blog talk about the AKS backup and restore on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, that's about the today's session. And uh, I really appreciate time. And by now, the lab environment should be ready. Let me go back to the console. Oh yes, yeah. The job already finished here. Uh, the total time is seven minutes and 13 seconds. So now you can log into the UI. Before you log in, uh, click the link here. You copy the token code here. And then we're going, I'm going to click the link. It will take you to the uh, custom web UI. So I paste the token code here. And then I can log into the custom a web console. So I select my company name, I select my email address, click accept. So you can see the job already kicked off. So right now it's running. So you click the link, you can see the job details. So in some, some time, in some situations, maybe the job for some, some reason could be the network, uh, you know, the policy created, the network configurations, and there are some issues, uh, the job might have failed. So I give you the option, if you want to run the job immediately or rerun the job, just uh, run the link, uh, type the link, run once.sh. So what we're going to do is with this command, we will rerun the job. Now, let me come back to custom web UI. So if I go back to the dashboard, you can see the job kicked off here and the snapshot job already finished successfully. 
And now, so basically that's two subtasks, part of the backup job. So our first job is to do the backup. And the second job is to move the snapshot to the object story. In this case, that's Azure Blob Storage. If I click the backup details, you can see, so we are not only captured the uh, MySQL database, which is running on the persistent volume claims. We are also capturing all the artifacts, all the configuration components from the Kubernetes cluster. On the screen, right hand side, you can see we capture the PVC, we capture all the different artifacts, like a namespace, the secrets, and uh, also the config maps, the services, and the service account storage class, uh, basically everything running inside of that particular namespace. In this case, we're back up MySQL database, which is running in MySQL uh, namespace. So we'll capture everything from your Kubernetes cluster as a single operation unit. And then when you need to restore them, we give you the granularity to just recover the individual resources or you can restore the whole environment. Let me just walk you through how to do the restore, why the export job is still running. So I click, a, uh, actually the job just finished. So I got a backup job finished successfully. I got an export job also finished successfully. Just quickly to show you how to run the restore jobs. So the first car applications, I got two applications here, basically the two namespaces. So from my SQL, you can see there are three restore points. If I click the restore points here, you can select the latest restore points. If I click uh, the latest one, you can see I got one snapshot from the container storage, which is a snapshot based. And then the second a restore point, that's from Azure Blob Storage, which is already exported. If I select the first restore point, you can see on the right hand side, you can either restore back to the original namespace, which is MySQL, or you might create a new namespace. Uh, let's say I might want to restore to MySQL Chrome, and you click create. And if I don't do any advanced selections here, you click restore. We're going to restore everything to a new namespace. And optionally, I'm going to show you here is you can currently recover individual objects. Uh, for, for example, if somebody just accidentally deleted a secret, there is no point to restore the whole uh, configurations, the whole database, it might take a long time. So you can deselect all of the artifacts, just select the secrets that somebody accidentally deleted and the click restore. We will just restore the individual resource. So I'm gonna just leave it here, all selected. I click restore, we will restore everything to a new namespace called mysql-clone. Yeah, that basically completes my session for today. So I did uh, one magic command, deploy, deploy the whole environment, including AKS cluster, including MySQL database, including the backup policies configured, including running the on-demand backup jobs. And I also showed you how to run the restore. And uh, after my testing all done, you just run another magic command. So let me go back to the cloud share here. So the one magic command is called destroy. If I run this command, I'm actually go ahead to destroy the whole lab environment. I done my testing, I want to save my money. I want to destroy the whole environment. So you just wait, you don't have to wait. You can go back to do, you know, something else. And in about, you know, about uh, eight minutes, 
the cleanup will be ready. Okay, that's pretty much all I want to cover for today. Thank you very much. On the screen, you can see my email address. You can also follow me via LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube. Thanks once again. I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you.